If you are able to stand, please, out of respect, do so for the reading of God's holy word, if you are able to stand. If you have arrived at the text, please say amen. amen. If you need more time, say more time. Amen. We will begin reading at chapter 4, verse 1, 1 Peter. Therefore, since Christ has suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same purpose, because he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. So as to live the rest of the time in the flesh, no longer for the lust of men, but for the will of God. For the time already past is sufficient for you to have carried out the desires of the Gentiles, having pursued a course of sensuality, lust, drunkenness, carousals, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. And in all this, they are surprised that you do not run with them into the same excess of dissipation, and they malign you. Mm -hmm. But they shall give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. All right. mm -hmm. For the gospel has for this purpose been preached, even to those who are dead, that though they are judged in the flesh as men, they may live in the spirit according to the will of God. Right. Our message for this morning is act like you know. Amen. Act like Amen. you know. Amen. You see, our whole purpose in life, church, is to live for Christ. Amen. And Sunday in, Sunday out, whether it be here at True Bible or listening to 105.7, Tony Evans, Chuck Swindoll, whoever your favorite preacher or pastor is, if he's a preacher of God, Sunday in, Sunday out, he is expressing to you that it is your utmost responsibility to live for Christ. All right. And we get sidetracked. We come to salvation in Jesus Christ and we forget what it is we're supposed to be doing. Uh -huh. You see, in today's text, Peter is telling the congregation that we need to live for Jesus. All right. Since Jesus saved us, basically, we owe him our life. You think you owe somebody else your life. You, you think you owe the bookie your life. You think you owe the loan shark your life. You think you owe your husband or your wife your life. Who you owe your life to is Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus died for you. So in the context of owing our life to Christ, we can't live for Christ until we get on the same page with Christ. The problem is many of us have come to Christ, but we get off the page with Christ, so page one is Christ and page ten is us. We don't know what Christ is doing because we're separated by nine pages. And because we're separated by the pages, Christ is doing his thing and we're doing our thing. And only what you do for God is going to last, so your thing is going to come to an end while Christ's thing is going to keep on going. All right, all if you right, look at right. the text today, we, yeah. we, we, we got to get on the same page. We got to get one on one with Christ. The text is saying, therefore, he's saying, as a result of what God has done for you, therefore, since Christ has suffered in the flesh, arm yourself also with the same purpose. All right. Christ has suffered in the flesh. Yeah. What does it mean when I say Christ has suffered in the flesh? When Peter tells them Christ has suffered in the flesh. What that means is that Christ has died on the cross. Right. There's no worse way to suffer in the flesh than by crucifixion. So when they hung Christ on that cross, they stretched him out, they pulled his leg down, they nailed him in the palm of his hand, they nailed him in his feet, they pierced him in his side, he suffered in the flesh. Yeah. And he suffered to the point of death. Yeah. And the Bible says, since Christ has suffered,
suffered in your flesh, we need to be prepared to suffer in the flesh. Right. In other words, we need to be prepared to die. Yes, we don't need to be afraid of dying. Why? Because God says he has not given us a spirit of fear, yes. but he's given us a spirit of power by which we can cry out, Abba, Father. He's given us a spirit of power and not of a weak mind, but of a sound mind. Amen. So when you suffer for Christ, you are not afraid to die. You need to be willing to say, Lord, I'm not asking you to take me home today. But if it be your will, I'm ready to suffer just like Christ suffered right, for me. Right. Because to live is Christ and to die is gain. Right. So he says, those who suffer in the flesh cease from sinning. So let me tell you, you ever seen someone who left this earth and gone to be with the Lord sin again? It's impossible for someone who has died from this earthly life to sin again. He said those who have suffered in the flesh, those who have died as having accepted Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, can't sin no more. All right. So just like Christ died and Christ never sinned a day in his earthly life, and when he died, he rose to the right hand of the Father in heaven, when you die, you can't sin no more. I'm not saying go out and shoot yourself in the head so you can't sin. I'm just saying you ought to be looking forward to the day Christ called you home upon this sin-sick situation we call the world. Some people are like, oh, I can't get with that. He's talking about dying. Well, what you think this is all about, living? This is all about dying from this earth and living eternally with Jesus Christ. That's right. So if you are afraid to die, then you know what they're saying to me? You don't want to go to heaven. Mm. I'll say it again. If you are afraid to die, mm. you don't want to go to heaven. He says those who have suffered in the flesh have ceased from sin. So Christ is on the page of it's all about getting to heaven. You need to be on the page of it's all about getting from this earth into heaven. Our whole endeavor is to get from earth to New Jerusalem. Our whole endeavor is to put the earth behind us while we step into the bright glory of heaven. All right. All right. What's your page? You on page let me live on earth forever or you on page let me go be with the Lord? I want to cease from sin. Yeah. As long as I'm down here, I'm susceptible to sin, and I'm going to sin. But once I've left this location, I've left sin. Whether I go to hell or whether I go to heaven, I'm done, I'm done sinning either way. But I might as well go upstairs instead of downstairs. Because upstairs is clean, downstairs is dirty. So, so, so he says, those who have, those who have uh, uh, suffered in the flesh, those who have died, has ceased from sin. And once you have died to yourself to sin here on earth, see, we die in two days. We, we die physically and we die spiritually. This is talking about dying spiritually to your sins through the acceptance of Jesus Christ. And even though you die spiritually to your sins through the acceptance of Jesus Christ, your body still lives down here, even though the spirit that inhabits you is from up above. So you're constantly wrestling against the flesh. You're constantly wrestling against temptation. But the Bible tells me that we have victory over temptation in Jesus Christ. It says don't practice the same sins over and over again. And when it says don't practice, that means don't make a habit of repeating the same sins over and over and over again. Because you don't have to repeat the same sins. We're going to sin, just don't sin in the same way. What is sin? Falling short of the glory of God. Falling short of his perfection. God is perfect and we're not. And I choose to walk in his perfection and leave my perfection aside. I need to be able to live for God. Peter is talking to the church and you look at the next verse. It says, so as to live the rest of the time in the flesh, no longer for the lust of men, but for the will of God. So, 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 so I died to self spiritually by accepting Christ. I don't look to treat myself anymore. I look to treat God. Amen. So now that I've died and suffered in the flesh and suffered in the spirit, regards to accepting Christ Jesus, now I need to live my life for Jesus. No longer live my life for mankind. Many times we're living our life for man. Yeah. I'm going to say it point blank. We're living our lives for family members. Yeah. If a family member goes south, we want to go south. If a family member cut up, we want to cut up. 
I don't need to live my life for my employer. I don't need to live my life for my brother. I don't need to live my life for my sister. I don't need to live my life for my wife. I don't need to live my life for my husband. If I live my life for Christ, all of them are taken care of. All right. All right. All right. Amen. I need to live the life for my boss who's paying me my salary because down deep, it ain't his pockets that's paying me. It's the long pockets of God that's got me covered. I need to know from which to my help coming from. I need to continue to look toward the hills. So, so, so it says, no longer for the lust of men. So if man desires it, I don't need to live my life desiring what's important to man. If this is what's important to man, I need to go in the opposite direction. If fame is important to man, I need to seek to be non-famous. If money is important to man, I need to seek not to be necessarily rich financially, but to be rich spiritually. Yeah. Because the Bible says God will supply all my needs yeah, according yeah, to his riches yeah, in heaven. Yeah. Having money ain't a bad thing, but I don't need to be seeking money. If God blesses all me right. with it, then I need to be yeah. like Solomon and say, Lord, give me the wisdom to deal with the increase that you gave me. Yeah. Because if I can't deal with the increase by the wisdom that you gave me, then I'm going to make a fool of the money that you gave me. The Bible says, fool and his money are easily separated. Uh, yeah. uh, so I don't need to seek the desires of men anymore. What does God want? God wants me to seek his will. Matthew 6 and 33 says, but seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness, and I'll get everything that I need. I didn't say I'm going to get everything that I want, because everything I want may not be what I need. I can get some ropes up in there that screws up my knees. Yeah. What's important are my knees because my knees sustain me. God says if I seek first his kingdom, yeah. if I seek first the kingdom of heaven, yeah. if I seek first the righteousness that's found by a relationship in Jesus Christ, it says all the things I needed to be added to. Me. If I'm single and I need a wife, God will give me a wife. If I'm single and I need a husband, God will give me a husband. But until I seek his kingdom first, I don't need no husband Amen. without the kingdom for him Amen. to come into it. Many of us seek the things and we don't have the kingdom to fall back on. Yeah. God says, I don't need to give you that until you got the kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. If you get the kingdom, yeah. you can deal with everything else. Uh -huh. We don't need to put the cart in front of the horse. Yeah. If we put the cart in front of the horse, nothing moves. But yeah. we put the horse in front of the car. If we put the Lord in front of our desires, if we yeah. put the Spirit in front of our selfishness, yeah. everything will work out to the glory of God. Yeah. So yeah. he says, he says we need to continue to know that God is the one who will never leave us or forsake us and will always guide us into his perfect will. If we live for him, it says, no longer for the lust of men, but for the will of God. Hmm. Then he goes into this area of you ought to be tired of what you've been doing for so long. <laughs> enough is enough. Yeah. He says here, he says here, now he's talking to the believer. He's talking to you. He's talking to me. He's talking to the first century church and he's talking to the 21st century church. He says, get how he put this. I like how he puts this because he didn't mention any words. He says, for the time already passed is sufficient. In other words, everything that you've done up until now ought to be enough. The time already passed is sufficient for you to have carried out the desires of 